Good evening. My name is Pastor Oscar Moses, and I want to welcome you to the Calvary Baptist Church. Uh, we're here to celebrate the home going of Sister Helen Yvette Long, uh, the daughter of our own Sister Sherry Long. And um, when one of the members hurt, we all hurt. And so we are here uh, to show our support and our love for this family. As we go into the homegoing celebration, uh, Minister Charles Tate will be furthering the services along. the scripture by standing and the word reads from John the 11th chapter 25th to 26th verse Jesus said I am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. May the Lord bless the readers, hearers, and most importantly, those that are obedient to his holy word. Let's prepare our hearts for prayer. Father in heaven, we come to you this day, Lord. Thank you for the life of our sister, our daughter, our mother, our aunt, Sister Helen Yvette Long. Lord, we pray that you strengthen the family. Bind them together, Lord. Let them weave and strengthen one another. Build them up where they're broken down, Lord. Give them comfort in this time of mourning. And we'll be careful to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. And you may be seated. We're going to follow the program as it is printed and there will be obituary and brief remarks by Manuel Long at this time. Oh, they have not yet to arrive. Okay, so... So let's have a musical selection at this time.
from the rain. My God is awesome. Heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weakened. Forever he will reign. Helen Yvette Long was born September 5, 1980, to Miss Sherry Long and Dr. Paul Robert Long. Helen was an amazing, caring, funny, and beautiful, kind person. She would never hesitate to help the ones she loved so much. She loved them and helped them every time she saw them. And she made the ones around her feel so special. Her motto was to forgive. Life is so short, she would say, and you never know when it would be your last time with someone. How true that was. She loved everyone for who they were and could always see the brighter side. Her light and her love would forever be missed. Let us celebrate the legacy of Helen, who was a devoted and loving mother, sister, and a friend. She survived by four children, Manel, 26, Torin, 23, Naya, 20, and Ezra, Ezra, 19. Also by her beloved mother, her three beloved sisters, nieces, and nephews, and a host of extended family and friends. May she continue to rest in peace. Resolution for Sister Helen Yvette Long. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Whereas the Calvary Missionary Baptist Church family, along with our pastor, Dr. Oscar T. Moses, expressed to the entire Long family our sincerest sympathy in the loss of your loved one, Sister Helen Yvette Long. Whereas Sister Long served many years as a member of the Calvary Missionary Baptist Church, and she was a member of the youth choir and was a faithful member. Whereas we want you to know that we share your grief, and yes, we do. However, we also celebrate with you Knowing to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Be it resolved that the Calvary Missionary Baptist Church family will be praying for you. Our prayer is that God's grace will be sufficient in the days ahead as you reflect on the life of your dear loved one. That he will comfort you and give you peace. Be it also resolved that whenever your heart becomes heavy, we pray you will remember John 3.16, which says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
May the promises of God forever be a source of strength to you and your family during this time of sorrow. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy be placed in the articles, in the archives, sorry, of the church records. Prayerfully submitted, Dr. Oscar T. Moses, pastor, and Sister Eunice Lamte, church clerk. Thank you. At this time of the program, there's time dedicated for a couple, two or three people to give their remarks and thoughts on this occasion. Uh, you can use that mic and that podium. I just ask that your comments are brief and held to two minutes. Helen's youngest daughter, and the only child who is here today, because no one waited for them to come in, to see my mom, to go to her funeral. No one waited for any of my siblings to come watch them. And that is the most heartbreaking thing of this whole thing, because no one waited for them at all. At all, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. No one waited for them. No. I am sincerely grateful for each and every one of you. I've been a member as well as my family for over 40 years under Pastor Davis and now under Pastor Moses. And one thing I have learned is that Pastor Davis started on time and Pastor Moses is doing the same. Amen. Is there anyone else? Hello, I'm Melissa, her, the third sister out of the four of us. There's Betty Joy. One thing I did want to say, and I might see that red light flashing, and I may or may not ignore it, um, but what I will say is that my mom came to Utah to find a better life for her four girls. She was escaping a bad marriage, and she wanted us all to do better. Um, Mom quickly realized that once we got here that um, she was gonna have to find vet work quickly because the vet kept asking for Cheerios. <laughs> and she said she couldn't take it anymore. She's, and we all know that vet loves cereal, but it started when she was very, very young. Um, us four girls, we're here, we're the only black girls in Utah I mean, in our schools and things like that. And because of that, not in the whole city of Utah, but in our schools, in our, schools. In our neighborhoods for sure. And one of the things that happens when you don't have a whole lot of friends outside of that is you become really, really close. Um, let's see here. I'm gonna skip through some of this, but the reality was that vet's nature was curiosity, tenacity, and love for adventure, and she did not um, translate that into following the rules at all the time. But we loved her for it. Um, my mom used to say, you guys are making her the scapegoat. When we all left the house and she had vet in the house, she realized there was never a scapegoat. <laughs> it was just vet and vet alone. Um, one of the stories that me and my sisters always kind of joke about is when we had, um, so my mom had put us in swimming lessons we used to walk to the school for swimming lessons and walk back. And one day we all started yelling while swimming lessons were going on in our respective classes because we all saw a four-year-old vet on the diving board <laughs> by herself 
never a class of swimming, and she jumped off, and we were all trying to go over there and tell her not to, but she jumped in that 10 foot of water, and somehow she got to the edge and she was fine. And that kind of sums up who Vet was. She was gonna make it to the edge safely. And even though she's not here with us, she's making to that edge safely. Um, around eight years old, she was in a group called the Sunshine Kids, um, which was connected to Up With The People, which my mom was a part of when she was younger. And she wore bright yellow and bright orange, and she sang, and that was, we knew that she was singing from really the time she was really, really young. Um, in high school, Vet asked me uh, what my favorite color was. If you look around, I'm gonna let you, <laughs> let you guess what my favorite color was. And at some point I said, Vet, you can take the color. That purple is yours. She loved it more than I did. Uh, when I left for college, she was 13. She threatened to get in trouble if I left. And all the time, I said, Vet, I'm still gonna go. She begged to go with me. And I said, Vet, I have to go and you'll be fine. Needless to say, she was 16 and got pregnant. <laughs> and she was so proud of being a mom, even though she was a young mom. And we embraced, there was no question that that baby was gonna be in the family. And we embraced Manel like it was our baby. And we spoiled her as much as we spoiled Vet over the years. And uh, needless, well, and I'll say Manel was also like our new little baby. Motherhood gave Vet great joy and happiness. And I told her one day that I gave my children, would have give their children a song, and that was Landslide. And Vet too took that for her children, and it was, became our favorite song. Uh, we called each other sisters. Vet had it, Vet and I had a very special relationship as us sisters all did. Um, we talked daily and many things often, and we're proud of one another. And regardless of our different journeys and our different perspectives in life, um, one thing I'll say, the, about four days before Vet left us, I brought her this vanity. And those of you who know Vet, she loved makeup. And she was in a bad relationship. And I told her, get out of that relationship. That vanity is yours. And I did. I gave her that vanity. And when I brought that vanity to her, she was excited. When I went to leave that day, my car wouldn't start for the first time. My car, wouldn't, my key wouldn't come out of that door. I'm out of the ignition, couldn't drive. And I sat there for about 10 minutes trying to get that, all the while saying a prayer. When I was done with my prayer, my car started up. And the thought in my head was, I hope that's the last time I'm not going to see that. But it was. And that was a very, very sad day. But I was happy that the last time I saw her was as excited as she's ever been in many, many years. Um, to some of the love that um, had was first and foremost her kids, her grandkids, mom, sisters, nieces, and nephews, friends that were sisters, friends that were family, and the family adult, additional family that she found along the way. Food in the form of cereal, candy, especially gummy bears, and, <laughs> and um, salad, crab legs, and her own cooking as well as my mom's. Having fun, loving life through the paths of sadness and the cruelty that come sometimes with being here on this world. Um, you will be missed, dear sister, and I am too obsessed with you and your light. Amen, Vet. Amen. 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 Um, so when Vet was young and up until an adult, she always told me she was afraid of death, but um, I told her when I got sick, I had a near-death experience and saw the light, so I had peace with that, knowing that she's gonna go to a good place. But what was a blessing was when she did pass, I was able to pray over her and see her for one last time, just to give her some comfort. And I'm, I'm blessed as a sister that we were able to do that. But um, as sisters, um, we were really close. We used to laugh a lot. Um, we used to do karaoke and she used to sing so much. But to say our hearts are broken is, is, is very hard to say. That's the minimum of this because she's somebody that um, like my sister said, we were all really close, uh, living in a neighborhood where sometimes we just had each other. So we were more than just sisters, we were best friends. So I just want to let you know that she was a good mother, a good sister. We love her. We're going to miss her. Um, and I'm grateful that all of you have come to help and people who've helped us and have um, 
been good to our family. We really appreciate all the support that we have gotten from you all. And um, thank you. Yes, thank you. Good evening. All right, I'm gonna try and pull it together. So these are my last few words um, to my mom. Um, really hard for me to even find the words, um, but I will start. Helen Yvette Long, born September 5th, 1980, to Sherry Long and Paul Long in Denver, Colorado. I was born in July 9th, 1997. She was 16, but she was ready to be a mom. The first thing my mom whispered in my ear was, I will always protect you and I will always be your best friend. And she will always protect me and be my best friend. She pointed me to someone who made the same promise at an early age, God. As soon as, as soon and soon I would come to learn God will always protect me and will always be my best friend. Jeremiah 29 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. She gave me three wonderful siblings, three amazing aunts, and a grandmother I would soon learn was my anchor. Helen, otherwise known as Vet, and later on in my life, known as Mimi, if you know, you know, <laughs> was an amazing, carry, caring, funny, crazy, beautiful, kind person. She would never hesitate to show the one she loved how much she loved them every time she saw them. And I mean every time she saw you. She made the ones around her feel so special. Her motto was to forgive. Life was too short, and you never know when it would be your last time with someone. She loved you for who you were and could always see the bright side of life. She was a fighter and she fought every day to, to get up and be here for us. I was battling what to say today because we all know how amazing my mom was, but she did have her ways. She fell short, just like all of us, and my mom's final lesson to all of us is that we are all human. Her love reminded me of Jesus and his love. She let me explain, oh, so let me explain why. She loved thy neighbor. It didn't matter their nationality, your creed, how much money you had, who you knew. She loved you because you simply were you. She would never judge anyone, no matter what they went through. She would find a way to empathize and relate. She was trusting, even when she shouldn't have been. But again, like Jesus, my mom fell short. She fell into depression. She questioned God and her purpose. Just like Jesus asked God, why have you forsaken me on this cross? And everything went dark that day, that day. And my mom had her dark days too. She had setbacks in life that sometimes would dim her light and would cover her in darkness. My mom questioned her purpose again and again. She sometimes wouldn't understand what God put her on this planet for. Well, that's why I was born. <laughs> Mama, I'm here to tell you I know God put you on this planet to remind us of God's grace. And we have God's grace and his mercy and his everlasting love. God's love never once wavered for my mom, just like her love never once wavered for me or my siblings or anyone she loved. He would somehow get her to get up and get out of the bed, put her makeup on and blast her music and continue to light up the world. My, mom is, my mom's love is unconditional. She reminds me or reminded me that every single day. First Corinthians, verse four through seven, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, and it keeps no record of wrongs. Mom, you were not perfect, but you were the best person I've ever been blessed to meet. You were not a perfect daughter, or you were not the perfect daughter, but you were the best daughter. You were not the perfect mom, but you were the best mom. You were not the perfect sister, but you were the best sister. And you were not the perfect friend, but you were the best friend. Ephesians 3.20, there will always be trials and tribulations in life, but God will carry you. 
through every storm in your life and give you strength to make it. Let us celebrate all the trials and tribulations you fought and won. You were too good for this world. Rest now, Mom, in the arms of the Lord. I got your babies, I promise. Please watch over us until we meet again. Mom, your light and your love lives in me. It lives in all who ever loved you. You will be forever missed. Your legacy will live in our, our hearts forever. Angels on your pillow, I love you. Amen. We we'll have time for one more. My name is Vicki Wade, and Sherry's been my best friend since 1983. That was just really, really small, and I have twin girls that are not quite a year older than her. So then we had triplets, and the triplets, they went everywhere together. They played together, they fought together, they drove us crazy together. Uh, Joy, Melissa, and Betty will testify to that. <laughs> but they became good friends and best friends. And my biggest thing is I want to thank Sherry. Sherry, you, no one can have a better friend than Sherry. If Sherry loves you, Sherry loves you no matter what. And she taught her daughters how to love too. Even now when they come up and hug me and call me Auntie Vicky and that, I just being with pride because these four little long girls love me and it means the world to me. One time, um, I don't know where our daughters went, but they were gone for the weekend and we were at Sherry's house and that had all these braids and my husband just sat there holding that and just unbraided her hair and she just sat there, remember? in your backyard and she just sat there and let him unbraid her hair and they just had this moment and so we were always there for each other and that she was perfect because she was perfect in the way that God made her and she may have stumbled and fallen but we all stumble and fall she always picked herself up brushed herself off and there she went and if I was going to be in a fight with somebody, I would want that in my corner because I wouldn't be afraid. I think I could maybe just stand away and watch because that would handle it all on her own. But Sherry, you're amazing. And your daughters are amazing. And your grandchildren are amazing. And I am so sorry that you're going through this now. But don't think that. Um, out of sight, out of mind, because if you get that thump in your head, you know that you did something that didn't like. Or if you get somebody talking in your ears and you can't get rid of it, but now your mom is telling you what to do and you better heed to it because <laughs> unless you do, she's not going to shut up. She just, the long women are very special, strong women, and they really deserve a lot of credit and respect and love. And I'm so sorry that all of you are going through this. And me and my girls and my husband, we're here for you. Sherry, up at 3 o'clock in the morning and you're knocking on my door, I'm letting you in. Because you used to do that for me all the time. So it's an honor to be here. It's an honor to be here and be able to tell people about these glorious women and the new longs, well, I guess they're not all longs because somebody might have another last name, but they're all long people and, and they'll rise up and they'll do good things. And I want to say to Isra, you were so brave and your mom knew you were there and she knew you were being strong for her. So in the moments when it hurts the most, just remember your mom, she heard your voice and she knew that her baby son was there with her. And, and find solace in that because not everybody gets that chance. And so thank you for letting me speak and I love you. Amen. We will ha now have a selection and after which the next voice you will hear will be 
the pastor, Dr. Oscar T. Moses.
God of grace and God of mercy, Lord, we know that you have all power in your hands. And God, we know that even at times like this, that you can mend broken hearts. And so God, we would that you would come now, touch the hearts of these, your children. Father, the chain has been broken, but give them that which they need to close ranks. Master, we ask that you would give us your spirit right now, that our hearts might be open, receptive, and responsive to what heaven is saying to this family for the living out of their days. It's in the mighty name of Jesus, the only name that matters. We count it all joy through faith. And all of God's people said, amen. Consider this thought with me. Let us pass over to the other side. Let us pass over to the other side. I had the opportunity and being the fairly new pastor, uh, there's a lot of people that are perhaps were part of Calvary that I no longer part. I don't, I don't really know. And so I've never had the opportunity to meet Yvette, but I do know sharing. And as I said earlier, when one member in the family hurts, all of us hurt. Um, and so I had to ask Sherry, I had to call Sherry, Sister Long, and ask her, I said, tell me something about your daughter. Uh, so I, I could kind of get a, a figure, a handle on who she was as a person. And through our talk, I discovered some things about Sherry, and I also discovered some things about Vet. I discovered that Sherry is a loving mother that knew her daughter's heart despite her hardships. And Vet was a loving daughter. And so I broke our conversation into three parts. I'm going to share that with you, and then we'll be done. This is what I have discovered from my, com my conversation with Sister Long about that she made the adjustments for life's aggravations. I said she made the adjustments for life's aggravations. Life had its ups and downs for her. Uh, Sherry said that Vet came into the world with difficulties in birth, but was a bubbly baby. She had misfortune happen to her by a person that took advantage of her at a young age, but she still kept her joy. She became a mother at a young age, and the first child was a difficult birth, but she was always humble. She had health challenges, but she pushed through them. She had some disabilities, but her heart was not dismantled. She had times when she had been taken advantage of, but she did not become apathetic. This told me that she didn't deny life's ups and downs. Life's ups and downs happens to everybody. You, you keep on living, you have some ups and downs too. And she didn't act as though they were not, they were not there, but she learned how to adjust in a way that helped her deal with life. She made adjustments for life's aggravation was number one, but number two, she faced tough challenges that didn't change her true compassion. I'll say that again. She faced tough challenges that didn't change her true compassion. So Long shared that when she would do something wrong, she knew she, she'd she jump up in her, our lap and hug her real hard. Amen, somebody. Sherry, Sherry said she had been through so much but remained humble and giving. She had compassion for people who would sometimes take advantage of her. There's some people that are hard because of hardship, yet there are, the, there are some people that have hardship but still have compassion. That was a type of woman that had compassion even on the homeless. Uh, Sister Long told me about the homeless man that she let in and fed. That showed me that she had a heart of compassion. She had some hardship, but she wasn't hard. She, she went through some storms, but she wasn't defeated by the storm. Her, her mama said, Pastor, my daughter was a good person. She, she wanted to do something to help somebody. And I've discovered that you can face challenges in your own life, and God can still move through you by showing kindness to someone who's facing a challenge. She made the adjustments for life's aggravations. She faced tough challenges that didn't change her true compassion. Here it is, number three. She had some flat tires on the journey, but she completed her trip. Her mother said their spiritual journey began in 1988. They were baptized here at Calvary. That's where her spiritual journey began. She had some hurts and some hardships. Didn't do right all the time, but neither do you and I. 
And if the truth would be told, this church would look more like an airport than a church because all of us are carrying some baggage up in here, up in here. We all have some some ring around the collar. We've all made some mistakes. And if it had not been for the grace of God, none of us would be right here today. And whether we want to admit it or not, uh, we all have something to thank God for as it results, results to our grace because we've all messed up. We've all dropped the ball. As a matter of fact, if you're looking for a perfect preacher, you got the wrong one up here because I've made some mistakes. in my, Don't look at me with that tone of voice. But I've made some mistakes just like you've made some state mistakes in your life. But thank God we serve a God not of a second chance but a God of another chance. Can I see the hands of folks that have messed up more than two times, but God has given you another chance and another chance and another chance. She was a mother of four. The bottom line is her journey on earth is completed. Uh, mother of four, just 43 years old, loved the Lord, loved the children, once sung in the youth choir at Calvary. She loved to cook. We, we don't know when the invitation will come for us to pass over to the other side, but it will come. Her passing seemed untimely, unassuming, unexpected, but sometimes that's just how Jesus moves. That had passed over to the other side. She's no longer here, but has reached her final destination. Brothers and sisters, that's what, that's what life is. It is it's, it's a journey, and we are all traveling towards a final destination. We did not come here to stay. Yvette passed over to the other side. The other side of light is darkness, the other side of pain is joy, the other side of bad is good, the other side of hot is cold, and the other side of life is death. And from that perspective, we all have to pass over to the other side. That brought us here to remind us that there is another side, and since we are here celebrating her life and final destination, let's honor her life by remembering some precious gems from Jesus Christ that can assist us towards our destination to the other side. Jesus often spoke sermons in a snatch of a phrase, and he gives you this sermon in one sentence, Mark 4, uh, verse number 35. He says, as the sun went down, eight words powerful, and let us pass over to the other side. He tells the disciples, let's pass over to the other side. He says, get in the ship, get in the ship. It's evening time, and we're going to make it over to the other side. Get in the ship. And if I tell you to get in the ship, you're going to have safe passage to the other side. And so the disciples get in the ship at Jesus's command. And lo and behold, when they get mid of the sea, here comes a storm that arise in the midst of the sea. But thank God they made it through the storm over through the other side. Here it is. Somebody's going through the storm right now, but you can make it over to the other side. Here are three things I'm going to give you. Jesus said, let us pass over to the other side we all got to pass over to the other side but your final destination depends on whose invitation you receive Jesus gives an invitation he says come unto me all ye that are heavy laden I will give you rest Jesus said get in the ship I'll take you over to the other side. But Satan gives an invitation too. Satan says, I have come to destroy, kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that they might have life. And not just ordinary life, but I see it not in your head. Amen goes well right through there. But abundant life, say invitation. Then it's transportation. It matters how you get to the other side. Jesus says, get in the ship. Scholarship is a good ship, but it won't get you to the other side. Friendship is a good ship, but friendship is like this and like that and like this and uh. There are many types of ships. Oh, but there is another ship. It's called the old ship of Zion. It has landed many of thousands. And still there's room for more invitation, transportation, preparation. You've got to make preparation. And I'm talking to somebody perhaps that don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to make preparation to go to heaven. I've heard that song, I got shoes, you got shoes. When I get to heaven, you're not just going to walk all over God's heaven. Because heaven is a prepared place. 
for prepared people. Jesus says, I go away to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. And you can do that simply by accepting the Lord Jesus in your heart right now. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed. Eternal God, our Father, we come now to thank you, Father, for the life of your vet. We thank you, Father, for her children. We thank you for her mother, her siblings. We thank you for every life that has been touched by her coming this way. Now, Master, I pray, Father, for those who perhaps do not have a relationship with you, that they would come into a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that without a shadow of a doubt that we all have to pass over to the other side. And for that, we give you glory. For that, we give you honor. And for that, we give you praise. It's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that we pray with thanksgiving. And all of those who love the Lord said, amen. I'm going to do the committal from here for as much as it has pleased Almighty God. To take out of the earth the soul of our dear beloved sister. We therefore commit our body to the earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, earth to earth. Looking for the general resurrection and the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At that time, the earth and the sea shall give up her dead. And those who sleep in him shall be made unlike unto his own glorious body whereby he's able to subdue all things unto himself. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, amen. We're standing all over the sanctuary, and I would ask that you would remain in the sanctuary until I have walked the family out of the sanctuary.